Hello, my name is Dr. Drew V. Moffitt. And today we're going to talk about how we can open up the U.S. economy immediately and why we can. In another presentation, we showed that the COVID-19 virus is no more deadly than the common flu. Well, if that's the case, what's the big deal? Well, it has to do with the infection rate, which is called r naught. r naught represents how many other people an infected person infects. For example, the r naught for the seasonal flu is only 1.3. But the R0 for COVID-19 is believed to be as high as 5.7. What this means, practically speaking, is that every person infected with COVID-19 will infect an additional 5.7 people. Therefore, COVID-19 is 4.38 times more infectious. What do we do? Well, we need to change the R0. Well, how do we do that? Well, remember that the R0 is the number of people an infected person infects. Well, in order to change the RO, we need to understand what affects the RO. The RO is affected by the size of the population and the proportion of susceptible people at the start, the rate of disappearance of cases by recovery or death, the first of which depends on the time for which an individual is infected and the infectiousness of the organism. So based on an understanding of what affects the r naught, the r naught can be changed by decreasing the effective size of the population. Well, how do we do that? Well, we're already doing that. That is being done by social distancing, shutdowns, and respirators, which effectively decrease the size of the population that can be infected, increasing the rate of recovery. Well, we're trying to do that by finding new medical interventions that can shorten the course of the disease. Well, finally, how do we decrease the infectiousness of the organism? Well, this is, it turns out, probably the most important question to answer. Well, to answer that, I need to tell you a tale of two cities. The first is New York City. It clearly has been the hardest hit from the pandemic, and there has been a lot of reasons put forth to explain this. Well, the biggest reason given is that New York City has a very high population density, the highest in the United States, in fact. Also of concern is it has a high number of international visitors per year. And in 2018, the most recent year I could find, the numbers of visitors from China exceeded 1 million, which obviously is a concern given the source of this virus. So with this slide, I'm going to take you through the unfolding of the COVID-19 pandemic in New York City. First, a couple of things to orientate you to this slide. We're presenting new cases per million per day. The purpose of the per million is to adjust the data so that I can compare these data to other cities. And again, this is per day data of new cases. Now look at this axis here. It goes from zero to 1,400. On this axis, we're presenting the actual date and each bar represents a day. So basically not much going on here until about March the 6th. You begin to see some trickling of cases a little bit more and then on the 17 things really start taking off. Now the population is 8.5 million and the population density is 27,900 people per square mile. Okay now let's look at the government response. So on about March the 2nd the government encouraged people to get out on the town don't worry about COVID-19. It's not an issue. Then, as some cases began to trickle in, the government recommended that gatherings greater than 500 should be pro prohibited. And then, as we began to see things taking off, 
government officials said that masking should be discouraged. Don't wear masks. Masks are bad. But at the same time, they said that businesses need to shut down and people need to shelter in place. Now let me introduce you to another city, Macau. Macau is a special administrative region of the People's Republic of China, sort of like Hong Kong. In fact, they are just 37 miles apart across the Pearl River Delta. They both are administered under the one country, two systems policy, which allows them to retain their system of government for 50 years. Its main economic driver is gambling, just like Las Vegas. Macau is a very interesting city to compare to New York City. First of all, it has a very high population density, 52,551 people per square mile. In fact, it's the most densely populated city on earth. It has a lot of visitors per year, 35.8 million international visitors. It gets a lot of visitors from China. In 2019, it had 27,923,219, in fact. And in December of 2019 and January of 2020, it had 2,795,275 visitors just from China. Well, all of these parameters are very significant risk factors for the severity of spread of a virus within a city from visitors from the country of origin of the virus, as well as from other countries secondarily infected from the country of origin. Let's see how these parameters compare between Macau and New York City. First of all, the population density of Macau is 1.88 times greater. The number of international visitors per year is 2.6 times greater. Visitors from China in 2019 were 25 times greater than New York City. Macau got more visitors from China in the first two months from the start of the pandemic than New York City gets in a whole year. So, the magnitude of the differences in these risk factors for pandemic severity are not trivial. They are massive. Therefore, based on these statistics, the number of cases of COVID-19 in Macau should have been catastrophically higher than New York City. This is what happened. Well, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to see that something very different is going on here in Macau compared to New York City. Let me start by orientating you to this slide. First of all, we're presenting again, new cases per million per day. We're adjusting for the population on a new cases per million basis. And this is very important because the population of Macau is much smaller than New York City. But because we're adjusting for the population, these data can be compared. Now look over here on this axis. Axis. Notice that it goes from zero up to 120. The graph for New York City went from zero to 1,200. The reason why I made this adjustment is because if I set up the graph on a scale of one of zero to 1,200, you wouldn't be able to see anything down here. That's because these cases are so low. There's like, you know, two, three, five, seven. These are extremely low numbers, despite the fact that the population density of Macau is very large and all of the other pandemic risk factor data we presented are much, much higher than in New York City. So, what is going on here? Well, let's look at the timeline of the public and government response in Macau. First of all, if you remember, this date here is January the 11th. If you remember, this is only shortly after we began to be getting data and information from China that something serious was going on. 
Well, as soon as that was heard, the population in Macau initiated extensive population-based masking. Shortly thereafter, the government initiated government-sponsored masking. What this meant is that the government mandated that adults wear a mask and they provided 10 masks per adult for every 10 days. So everybody had a mask to wear. Then when they began to see uh, a few small spikes, they initiated a strict travel ban. And then on February the 4th, businesses shut down. And then nothing happened. No new cases at all. So because of that, on February the 27th, businesses were allowed to reopen. Let me say that again. On February the 27th, businesses were allowed to reopen. They did so with extensive masking, however. And then afterwards, nothing happened until a couple of cases began again. These were initiated from travelers from outside of Macau. Well, I hope you're asking yourself this question. What is the reason for this dramatic difference? This question demands an answer. Why? Because the total deaths in New York City as of April the 23rd is 20,861. The total deaths in Macau as of April the 23rd is zero. That's zero. This mandates a close second look at Macau by everyone. So let's take a closer look right now. I haven't looked at these kind of timelines for every country, but I have looked at many. Almost all countries did not initiate action until after they began having cases. Macau was no different. Now that we understand that there is significant asymptomatic spread and that the R0 may be as high as 5.7, that means that when you see that first case of community spread, that person got it from another person that has already infected at least five people. And on and on it goes. If you want to stop that from starting, you have to initiate something before that asymptomatic spread. So let's look carefully right here. January 10th is when the Macau population initiated extensive masking. That was 12 days before the first cases. And these cases came from out of country. This is probably before asymptomatic spread of the virus began in Macau. Therefore, Macau is the only one that I know that had wide-scale adoption of masking significantly before any reported cases. The result probably was a significant drop in the number of people that were infected from asymptomatic spread and therefore their ability to infect other people was limited, or in other words, the r naught was decreased. I think that is a pretty good case for concluding that it was not the travel ban and business shutdowns that led to almost no cases in Macau despite its massive risk factors. However, let's try and explore further if it was a lockdown or the early and widespread adoption of masks that provided the amazing protection Macau has enjoyed. <clears throat> to explore this further, I tried to find a country that initiated strict quarantines in the same timeline as Macau, but did not have a broad adoption of masking along the same timeline. I looked mainly at European countries because they do not have as significant a culture of masking as do Asian countries. There are probably others, but I picked Lithuania because it seemed to have initiated similar and significant government-sponsored restrictions along the same timeline as Macau. Now it has a greater population than Macau, but a much lower population density. 
So when there began to be cases, the government initiated business shutdowns and a strict travel ban, just like Macau did. However, the cases in Lithuania rise in typical pattern, though lower magnitude seen in many countries, but clearly nothing like the almost non-existent response seen in Macau. There was a population initiated masking, but nowhere near the adoption seen in Macau. It wasn't until much later that government sponsored masking was initiated. In conclusion, I think it is very fair to say that extensive masking must have contributed significantly to the remarkably low incidence of new COVID cases in Macau. Going back to our initial conclusion that we need to change the R-naught, in addition to changing the R-naught by social distancing, shutdowns, respirators, and medical interventions, I believe that our tale of two cities, actually three, clearly shows that we can decrease the infectiousness of the COVID-19 virus through masking, which effectively changes the infectiousness of an individual by making them less likely to transmit the virus to another person. As of February 27th, Macau is open for business. That happened just 13 days after the start of business shutdowns. Why were they able to do that? Universal masking. The employees wear masks and the customers wear masks. The phased in guidelines of the Trump administration are great. They just need to add one simple sentence. Any business that implements a universal masking policy may open immediately. Let business owners and the free market figure out how to implement that policy. Actually, this is already part of the plan. The plan says that we should all use face coverings while in public. Well, any place outside of our homes is a public place. The grocery store is a public place. A restaurant is a public place. The movie theater is a public place. My dentist's office is a public place. The emergency room is a public place. Disneyland is a public place. Any place other than your home where you could come closer than six feet to another person is a public place. All we need to start the economy immediately is to allow businesses that are able to institute a universal masking policy to reopen immediately. Universal masking works. Businesses that adopt a universal masking policy can safely reopen. U.S. guidelines should be amended by simply adding the following. Businesses that adopt a universal masking policy can reopen immediately. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, please share it with somebody and be safe.